You go tutor. I may. Wow, that is yeah. not what but I expected. In Watch fam, I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Out, but I've been saying that line for seven years? Seven years, over seven years. That is ago. It's weird to think about the scope of TNH because I've like there's a time in my life where I watched TNH. Whoops. I haven't watched TNH in years. Well, but there's a there's a part of my life where I did and just never it didn't work for you, didn't know you people. Isn't that just funny? was like, oh, it's TNH. Yeah. That's really weird. The coolest thing, like, this is kinda gonna sound weird, but the coolest thing was uh during COVID when people were like, yo, all oh, no, fucking just binging. I'm like, that's so cool. Yeah, like, it's like, what? like I, I was watching, you know, I don't know, I was watching came in from porn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys were watching me, I guess. Which is like what you guys are watching me. <laughs> which I guess makes sense, you know. <laughs> Dude, have some chocolate, relax. Uh, yeah. What are you wearing? I am wearing a G Shock for reasons we'll talk Oh, you're gonna hate part of this episode. Oh great. But you also may love it. You're wearing an Artemar PG. I, I love when people say people say, Oh, you should be my friend Nathan. You would love him. What are the odds? What are the odds I'm gonna like your friend? Do you Zero. know what the odds are Zero. that I like? I I, I I have strong disdain for most people. I know. I'm gonna like your friend, like so unlikely. The disrespect. So unlikely. It's all the disrespect. What is that from? The dis. No, I'm just making it up. It's oh. the disrespect someone says. Yeah, I'm wearing Audemars Piguet, baby. Dude, big. Ooh, cut away. This video is sponsored by Whatnot. Boom. Let's do it. Ready? Yep. Draw winner, drawing, drawing winner on. And you may be thinking, what is Whatnot? Well, Whatnot is an online community marketplace where you can bid on items in real time with the creators or the sellers being live on video. So if they're doing a watch, for example, they'll be holding the watch in their hand. They can respond to you, they can talk, they can joke around. And very importantly, Christian and I are doing that exact thing in two days, June 23rd, 2022 at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Christian and and I will be going online with whatnot. We'll be giving away a ton of things. We may even be selling a few watches that you can bid on in live time. Last time we did this, it was a ton of fun. We kind of just hung around and talked with all of you and answered questions and stuff. So I'm thrilled. I can't wait, but uh, more on that later. Can't wait. What are today's subjects? What are we Dude, talking about, baby? We're going to go over... Dude, there's very... so many honeys. There's so many babies. Like this little big... Of the bear bad lady. With these big fucking claws. Yeah, I'll tell you that one. I, that's no, from no Swingers, idea. by the way. That's from Swingers. Great oh, okay, movie. Okay. You should watch that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, John Favreau, I think it's like his first movie. Um, you know John Favreau? Yes, of course he yeah. is. Elf? Yeah. You're like Elf, right? Yeah, Elf. Yeah, Elf. Um, he's super rich, by the way. Oh, who would have well, thought that the doctor from Elf He's the guy you're like, well, he's rich. the doctor from Elf. And you're like, oh, wait, he made Elf. Oh, wait, he made Iron Man. Oh, oh wait, he is, he, he's in Iron Man. Oh, wait, he wrote every other thing in Hollywood. <laughs> it's great. Plus, he like plays a little bit of like a mealy mouth beta. Yeah. So, so, like, who knew this guy's got hundreds of millions of dollars? It's one of those inside jokes, like, um, Carol from The Office is... is Steve Carell's real wife. wife. But, yeah. like, the whole joke for the staff is, like, Steve Carell always pretends he hates her. Uh -huh. Like, in the film, he's like, ugh, Carol. Uh, yeah, funny. It's his wife. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, we were talking about Casio because mm -hmm. they have some very famous models I just felt like talking about. Then we're talking a quick story. I met Neil deGrasse Tyson and touched his watch. I know. That was weird. Famous politician, right? Yes. Some people don't get that joke. I don't, I don't get the joke. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> don't get me off on a Yeah, I know. You see, I got you there. And then finally, I'm going to throw it in your court in terms of value between certain pieces from Omega and Tudor. Because they're very different, but they have some very oh, similar watches. Oh, yeah. You're going to bite this steak and very shake your head. Very strong opinions. Very yes. strong opinions. So we'll get very intense later. I was looking at Cassie Oaks, which you're familiar with, I Cassie assume. Oaks, it's a mod though, right? Or is no, it, no, oh, it's, it's actually one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was looking at Cassie Oaks, and then I was like, you know, it'd be fun to do a little tiny segment on the infamous Cassio G-Shocks that are out there. Let's do it. And there's a little, there's a mindset or a style that like this picture of John Mayer wearing it, mm -hmm. if you can pull it off right, it's very cool. It's very like late 80s, 90s throwback. A, uh, a G-Shock. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. And you could also do it horribly wrong. It could look awful, probably like what I'm doing today. But there are some cases where you're like, oh, that looks very refined, yeah. which I will ask you at the end if you know of any of those cases or if you have any thoughts on this. But anyways, the original G-Shock was made by Kiko eBay can, mm -hmm. to withstand a fall of 30 feet. Founder of eBay. Founder of eBay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the G-Shock was his least <laughs> Unbelievable luck with unbelievable this guy. Unbelievable luck. He's like, yeah, he's unbelievable. <laughs> he also made Kikoman, soy sauce. Nah, not as popular. 
Anyways. You put that on your little cucumber rolls, you little baby? <laughs> <laughs> I went I went and picked up I picked Michael up sushi a couple weeks ago, and yeah. I felt so bad because I didn't have cash, so I gave the guy a credit card, and the sushi was $3.10, and I gave this guy a fucking I don't credit card. So it's cucumbers this, and avocados. This poor Japanese man who's you know, trying to work a, like an honorable job, I give him $4, and he has to thank me. And he has to have a fee. credit card, yeah. yeah $2 you. Amex charge, you know. Dear God. Okay, so... G-Shock was supposed to be able to withfall, withstand a fall of 30 feet, mm. be able to be submerged in 100 meters of water, mm. and then have a long-lasting battery. Mm. They more than achieved that. Mm. These watches are basically indestructible, 200 meters water resistance. Mm. This The battery's supposed to last for two years. I've had this watch for six years. Never hasn't died, died yet. Yeah. Insane. No, it's incredible. But the first watch was the DW5000C, which is beautiful. My favorite style of watches is the original. DW5600 is uh -huh. what I have. And I love it. I haven't, I've always wanted to get the solar version or the atomic version. I just haven't. I was going to when this battery died and it just doesn't just die. And it's still beeping, which means the battery has got Healthy. a lot of life left. Yeah, wow. so I'll probably have it forever and will never die. But then we have John Mayer's G-Shock, the 6900 PT80. That was his second one. Mm -hmm. But both of his watches are mods of the 6900. Mm -hmm. Do you like those watches? The John Mayer watch? John Mayer collaboration specifically. Oh, you yeah, know, they're very cool. I mean, you know, again, I I don't like G-Shocks. So, so yeah, this right, is a right. cool G-Shock for me. Um, I, I I don't like G-Shocks, though. Period. I get The only thing I, I say about John Mayer's G-Shock and specifically is, like, I understand he's John Mayer, but I wish it just... He's like, oh, yeah, it, it ties to this vintage keyboard. I understand that's great. I just feel like John Mayer has to be tied to music designs. I want him to just do something and be like, I did this because I like it. You know what I mean? Well, maybe, but uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, he probably does like it. Yeah. But it's one of those things where the second one was also like, oh, well, it's this thing. And I'm like, okay, well, just make a cool one that you just think is cool too. Yeah. I, you mean, like, I mean, you mean like if John Mayer spent a week in Hawaii and made a G Shock, like, yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, that's, that'd be cool. I, mean, it, it, I just think that any partner, like the G Shock or the Hodinkee or whatever, are going to be like, could you tie it to music? I know. I know. And that's why I don't like it. Yeah. Obviously, it makes perfect sense, but I'm like, is that your organic thought? Like, were you playing this keyboard and we're like, oh, I'd love to see a 6900 in this color. Yeah, no. Yeah. No. So I would want to see him just do it for fun. This is the Cassie Oak. This is the woman's version. I figured I'd put it there just to spice it up a little bit. Right. But this is basically, I see the DW5600, the 6900, and now the Cassie Oak as like the trifecta of very famous G-Shocks that I think are really cool. I don't have, I really only have this one. But I think the Casio would probably be the next watch that I get mm. in the Casio in the G-Shock line. So now the only question I had that I wanted to swing over to you was, what outfit do you think could be? I have an idea of this, but what outfit do you think could be pulled off by the G-Shock and not look dumb, like look like you thought about what you were wearing? Yeah, I don't know. Um, geez, I don't know. I I I could see it with like like. Uh, Again, it's too fucking big for my wrist. Period. End. Right. Yeah. But yeah. I could see it with you know cool like you know like Vans. You know like a good full cut jean, like a really really nice like crew neck uh, uh, sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. Like just a, like a like a really nice one. Yep. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean even oh you yeah. Know, that's how I would wear it. I'd wear it like kind of like just that. You know, I, like kind of nineties. You know. Kind of like I just wouldn't wear that watch though. I'd wear my yeah, brigade, yeah, right. you know. It's, it's dressing not even close. dressing it up is an interesting take. I think you could pull it off, but you have to dress it up in a particular way. You mean like formally? No, 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 no. But like like what you said, like wearing a specific sweater is cool. Yeah, I it's just you know. There's just some like vibe to it that I really really like. That's hard to do properly. Yeah. Like if I wear a, like a black hoodie. And then this, mm -hmm. I think that's pretty cool. I'm like, oh yeah, that looks kind of rough and yeah. cool. But like this, this picture looks great. And then I've been watching a lot of Stranger Things, mm -hmm. where I, they all wear vintage Casios, and I'm like, ah, there's just something about it that's like cool, and it's cool because you're wearing a cheap plastic watch. Well, I like the vintage Casio, like the that. This is the one I'd wear. This is a great watch. That's fantastic. That's cool. The yeah. gold and the red, nasty. Yeah. yeah, that is. I fully agree. I would wear that watch in a second. That's cool. That's really cool. Is you some... wear that watch with the pajama shirt? Forget it. Dude, <laughs> don't. There's something about it where it's just like it's so cheap and digital and it doesn't try to be rich at all that it's like, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. I think those watches are great. I, yeah. I, I, I've considered buying them on many occasions. I just always didn't because I'm like, ah, am I really going to wear it? But then the reality is like, I think it's super cool. So maybe I would. Yeah, it's fun.
Anyways, that's the summation of G-Shock. It's just, unless you need it for a specific purpose, it's just fun to wear. Yeah, I, I don't like, uh, uh, my Uncle Tori wears one like all the time. Um, you know, he like during the summertime, he's like cleaning the pool, he's fucking around outside, he's cleaning up. Like he wears it then, he loves it. Fishing, yep, you know, yep. it's like a big thing. Um, I actually don't always even wear, I don't always wear a watch fishing, but I wore a watch fishing lately in a film that you guys are sleep really soon with Longines. Yeah. Which is a great, great film. Yeah, it's, you guys are going to love it. But, um, but yeah, that's. I agree. That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay, so like I said before, Christian and I are actually going live in two days on Whatnot. And Whatnot is an online community marketplace where you can tune in live to auctions happening, whether that be in art, watches, which is what we like, sneakers, and really anything else that you could possibly ever desire. You get to look at the item in real time, ask questions to the creator. Sometimes creators like us will just be doing giveaways. We're giving away a ton of stuff from the Theo and Harris Leather Goods Shop today. So that will be a ton of fun. But all in all, Whatnot is really just an incredible marketplace slash social network that allows you to directly talk with people that are selling really cool items. And then also just kind of hang out in the community for a little bit with a live chat. We had a lot of people in our Whatnot chat last time that were chatting with us, asking questions, getting things given away to them. Christian gets a little drunk with power and at the end of the sessions usually starts giving away a lot of stuff, so that's a lot of fun. But either way, I highly suggest you download Whatnot using our link below. You will save $10 off of your first purchase and you can hang out with us. So I will see you June 23rd, 2022, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and let's get jiggy with it. So, very quick story, I met Neil deGrasse Tyson. I know, that's cool. I went to see Manhattan Henge, which is when the sunset perfectly aligns with the New York City Manhattan grid. Mm -hmm. So that way you see a sun going basically down this entire stretch of the city. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. It was hazy. There's trees everywhere. I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. But who That's I funny. did see was Neil deGrasse Tyson. Mm -hmm. And I saw him. I didn't see him at first. I was standing on this bridge, the Tudor something bridge. Mm -hmm. It was packed. It was absolutely loaded with people, cameras everywhere. And it's pretty quiet. And there's one guy ranting about space, about veganism, about vegetarianism, ranting to the point where I was like, who is this guy? And I turn around, it's Neil deGrasse Tyson. Wow. So I said You're to like, the guy I next turn to around, me, it's Don King. And I said to the guy, is that Neil deGrasse Tyson? He says, oh yes, I'm surprised you haven't heard him for the past hour. And I was like, I just, I recently did. So I'm there and the sun is probably an hour and a half from setting. That's how early I'm, I am. And it's getting more and more packed. And the whole time I'm thinking, oh my God, I have to get Neil deGrasse Tyson to do a video with Theo and Harris. I have to, I have no choice, I have to do it for Christian. I was like, but I can't tell you till after till I did it, done, yeah. just in case it doesn't work out. So I'm standing there, Neil deGrasse Tyson's over my shoulder and I'm reading about him and I'm reading about- So you can know Theo. everything. Yeah. yeah, of course. And I'm reading about the watch that Omega gave him, which was a, Stephen Hawking, like, tribute watch that they made specially for him, and he's wearing it on his wrist. So I was like, oh my god, this is perfect. Like, this is what I'm gonna say. This is how I'll say it. This is the question I'll ask him. Panicking the whole time. Finally, sun sets, I didn't see anything. Everybody's like, can I get a selfie? Can I get a selfie? He's doing a bunch of selfies. Very, very nice. He was ranting just because I think he kind of sees that as his duty at that event. He also popularized Manhattan Hinge. But... I think he enjoys ranting as well, but... Oh, no, no, I meant the his duty to, to like, rant. Oh, like, right. yeah, of course he... <laughs> I think he likes it. He clearly loves it. He's very loud. <laughs> but I was like, okay, now it's my shot. I was like, can I get a selfie? And I, I did such a bad job of my voice. You said that? Can I get a selfie? That was the well, first Well, no, 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 I didn't say can I get a selfie. But oh. I said, Neil, everybody's taking selfies. So I was like, can I get one or something right, like right. that? And I was so nervous that my voice was kind of hoarse. <laughs> Neil, can I get one? <laughs> So as I'm reaching my hand back with a, a real camera, not a small one, oh, so he's man. he's starting to be like, wow, that's a big camera. I accidentally cut him off. I'm like, I also have a question for you. And I was like, I know, blah, blah, blah. I know you have this Omega, the collaboration, whatever. And I know Omega gave it to you. Would you ever consider doing a film about it? I was like, I've worked with Omega. And before I can really get more into the spiel, he goes, mm, I don't do product. And I was like, Okay, and he was still really nice about it. He wasn't like dismissive. And he was taking, he was, as he's saying, he's taking his watch off. And he's like, but it's really cool. Like, do you, I was like, I guess I know about it. I just read about it, Neil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm wasting this guy's time. And I'm starting to walk away, essentially, as he's showing it to oh, me. Oh my God. Oh my God. So I'm like, yeah, it is cool. Like, try not to waste his time. He's like, yeah, it's really cool. They gave it to me. Yep, that's when he had on. 
He's like, they gave it to me, this and that, but like, I don't do product. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And I was just like, ah, but I saw it. I was very, very close to it. He had it out right in front it's of me. It's a great looking watch. Yeah, oh, wait, in that picture? Yeah. Not that one. The one where he was wearing that shirt. <laughs> He's wearing it in that picture. That is with so the floral funny. Pattern. Wow. It's a gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous watch. I literally watch. was going to say, how do you know what shirt he's wearing? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I talked to him. Super nice. Very talkative. And, awesome. Uh, very he, cool. He went to do a video with us. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I, but, yeah. I knew the answer. The, the truth is, like, if, you know, if, if any, like... And I know that I know that you know I know that you know this, and, and maybe he just really just really doesn't do product. Period. We I would have done we would have done the film for free, like even not without even billing Omega, like just as an educational beautiful thing. Yeah, right, thing, right. But that's know? why I told you my blunder when he said I don't do product. I should have said this isn't product. This is about time, right? And space. Uh, he would have been like, oh, oh, Neil loves time yeah, and space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. no, I butchered it. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. No, that's an amazing story. When you called me, I was like freaking out. That was really, really oh, it was cool insane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What a great looking watch. What a great looking watch. Fantastic watch. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, that's the Neil deGrasse Tyson story. Well, there you go. Look at you saw Neil deGrasse Tyson. I did. I, I stood with him. I watched Sunset with Neil deGrasse Tyson. That is pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say without criticizing Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Final topic. Omega versus Tudor. Yep. I was thinking about this recently. Omega... I, I hate to say this, but I feel like Tudor in some aspects is still a sub-brand. Yeah, it is. Well, it is, it, is a, it is a sub-brand of Rolex, for sure. But even, like, they are a complete brand, but I feel like their offerings are still sub-brand, like, Com in yeah. amount. You know what Comparing I'm saying? Comparing the Omega catalog in its entirety yes. to, Omega, to the Tudor, can't even do it. Comparing certain watches head-to-head, -head, you can. Yes. But the catalog, Omega, is far more mature. And there's some very obvious value adds that... I'm going to ask you hold off until the end to bring up, one of them being the type of movement that's in Omega. Uh, Just because right away it's like, okay, well, that's a right. different ballgame. So face-to-face, -face, I'll give you two watches. Hear what you think. We'll move on. You can be very brief. Just which one over the so other. I'm evaluating Why? style. Anything. If you're going to buy Bob these watches. Movement. Any, yeah. Movement, go as far to be like, well, they're both in-house. But we'll get to like okay. some clear things at the end. Otherwise, it's a blowout. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. these are comparable in price. You ready? Omega Seamaster Professional. It's like 300. asking, like, would you sleep with this girl by the sound of her voice? <laughs> yeah. Why would I do that? I know. It's the, the no, biggest thing to leave off. Omega Seamaster Professional 300. The answer is yes, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> do you know anyone with a nice voice? Yeah. Omega Seamaster Professional yep. 300, any color. The green probably is still. fantastic. Yeah, probably I can, steel. I can, I can put on a strap. Anything you want to do. Okay. With it. Yep. Okay. Then we have the Ooh. Black Bay 58. That was a good head-to-head -head because the Black Bay 58 in silver, which is the, this is a nice watch. Sterling silver, yes. Fun. This is a good watch. Yep. In this particular example, I'm going to go Tudor. Wow, okay. Any specific reason? I love the usage of alternative materials, and I think they nailed the color palette on this watch. I wouldn't wear it on that strap. I would do it on a fabric strap, but I think that's a great... That's a that's a really cool watch. If the Omega was also in sterling silver, it wouldn't even be close. Omega all the way. Omega all the way. Yes. Okay. Cool. Any cons for the Omega? Um, you know, I don't love the bracelet on those watches. Um, it's just a little bit big for me. It doesn't taper, so it's just a little bit big and bulky for me. Yep. Um, I do. You know, that being said, I've seen some aftermarket bracelets on those watches that are crazy. Yep. Um, again, great watch, but um, I you know I, I have a hard time looking at the Seamaster without comparing it to uh, other like Seamasters in the collection from the Heritage collection yes. that I prefer. Yep. So this watch reminds me of James Bond, um, you know, the Pierce Brosnan yep, James yep, Bond. Of course. But, um, you know, I, I, I go with the other watch. You go with the Tudor. Yep. Any, quickly, any cons on this Tudor? Any cons? Yep. Um, no. No, solid size, everything. Great, right? I think it's great. Okay, cool. Next, the Aquaterra. Yep. Any color, doesn't yep. matter. Any size, they're all basically 39 millimeters. Yep. And then we can go two ways. We okay. can go with the Black Bay 41. Yep. I did 41, there's also 36 and 31. Yep. I did 41 because it's the same size as this Aquaterra specifically. $5,400 versus $3,275 for Tudor. Again, the Delta is well, the thing that we can't bring up because it's the movement. Yes. Um, but... I will say, I will say Omega. Okay, and ready? Yeah. This in steel and gold. The Tudor in steel and gold. Still uh, cheaper than the Omega. Very nice. Very nice. Two-tone. Yep. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, beautiful. 
to me, it's a date just. Yep. Which is great. Mm -hmm. But the Aquaterra is an original, I think, very smart watch that's extremely comfortable to wear. Um, I don't love it in black as much as I love it in blue. Yep. But uh, in other colors, I go with, I still go with the Omega. Okay. And the movement is crazy, which I won't bring. Yeah, yeah. The, the ending notes is going to be where the real answer is yep. for most of these. But yep. stylistically, Tudor gets the win. I give it to Omega. Oh, but Omega I, I do love the Tudor. I okay, love the yep. Tudor. Yep. But the Omega gets the win. Okay, so we have one for Tudor, one for Omega. Yep. Finally, this is where I assume yep. probably a blowout. But we have the Tudor Black Bay chronometer. Yep. And I also tossed in just their... Monte Carlo. Yes. Yeah. Versus, obviously... Speedmaster. Speedmaster is more money, but if you're looking at their offerings, we're really comparing the Black Bay chronometer or the Black Bay chronograph versus the so, Speedmaster. So, so I throw the Black Bay out immediately. Black Bay's gone. Black Bay's gone. Okay. I will also. We can do a secondhand Omega, so the prices are similar. Okay. So I throw the Black Bay out because it's great, and a lot, a lot of people love it. And it's great, mm -hmm. but I like the Monte Carlo much more. Mm -hmm. Um. I love the colors. I think it's great. I think it's great. It's a gorgeous watch. Gorgeous watch. Yep. Too thick. Too thick. Way thick. Very, very thick watch. Interesting. For, again, for other people, Big Wrist John, yep. people like that, great. Not not for me. Not even close. Wow. How thick? Um, is it? The thing, the thing is. Really? It? Oh, it's got girth. It's girthy, baby. Oh, God. Yeah. My least favorite thing about watches. Yeah. Um. So I go, and, I, and the bracelet's thick, too. I go with the Omega. Yep. Now, again, no disrespect to the previous generation of Speedmaster, mm -hmm. but if it was the previous generation with the older bracelet, which is a great watch. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yep. But it's too thick for my wrist, and now the sizing is a little bit kind of equal, and mm -hmm. I can't do strap. I have to do bracelet. I may go Tudor. You go Tudor? I may. Wow. That is yeah. not what but I expected. But in this particular, new to new, yep. this watch, I go Omega, mm -hmm. but if I'm going previous generation, I go, I go Tudor. Wow. Yep. Crazy. But this this Speedmaster is unbelievable. Oh, yeah. I want that watch. Oh, yeah. Like, it's I would love that watch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And finally, before we get to the, the real kind of rant, this picture is insane. This is on Tudor's website. It is a woman's hand in a pool. She's wearing a black bay. And she has this massive sweater that you would never want to bring near a pool. No. And it's clearly a massive, massive sweater. And then a black bay on her wrist that Makes kind no of sense. cinches the sweater. Makes no sense. Uh, no, I've never been stopped by a product picture. Usually you'll send me product pictures and be like, look at this picture. Look it's this. ridiculous. Yeah, right. This was the first one I ever was like, wow, is that a bad product picture? I do not understand the art that went behind that. That is bad. This looks like it's left over from the Lady Gaga era. I agree. You know that what is, I mean? This is recent? This is on their website now. That's terrible. Yeah. Terrible photo. Makes no sense. I don't know a single woman that would be more likely to buy that watch because of that photo. No. Okay. So we'll get to the final part. I'm it sorry, also shows me you don't really understand women. Like, I don't like, you know what I mean? You were not prepped beforehand with this at all, but you somehow managed to basically tie them by kind of going either way on the Speedmaster and the Well, Kronos. yeah, yep. So, you're in the middle. Now, what's the obvious kind of thing that kind of gives Omega a slap in the face on all of these? I mean, or the, gives Tudor a slap the, in the face, rather? The, the movements, you yeah. know, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with the Tudor movements. They're great movements and they're incredibly reliable and, and all and that stuff. the Black Bay 58 is a chronometer. Yes, it is a chronometer. Which is also huge, um, in-house. The research and development that Omega has put into their movements, which I've seen firsthand at their factory, is unbelievable. I mean, it is, it is unbelievable. Not only are the movements beautiful and highly intelligent, um, but, they're, but they're finished well. They're incredibly accurate, and they had a dedication to accuracy before anyone. Yeah. Okay, with their, with their Metas certification. Which is insane. Um, I, uh, I, Omega blows me away in that way. I... I yeah, I give them a remarkable amount of credit for all they've done. When you want to go head to head with Omega, not in, maybe not in terms of like hand finishing quality for movements, but in like sports watches or anything like that, Omega dominates. Oh yeah, master chronometers, which is involving magnetism, super accurate. Like any new technology that is standing, not technology that's you know kind of yeah. okay, it's cool, but it doesn't really do anything. Omega implemented. Years before anybody years else, before. and and their movements are more beautiful than Rolexes. <laughs> like they're you know, for 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 half the price. For That's half it. the price, Omega's delivering in many instances better watches than Rolex. 
their movements are unreal. Yep. And you, you know what's funny is when you flip it over right away, you know like um, there's there's, there's no messing around. It's beautiful. So tying that in and movements, do you give anything to Tudor? I mean, on an objective level, no. Omega kicks Tudor's ass. Period. End. They're yeah. kicking your. I mean, it's not even close. Yeah. But. You know, we're not when you when you broaden the conversation out of just what you have to. Then, then yeah. So then I gave Tudor props where props is due. I I love Tudor. Tudor definitely got a place. Their price point is totally appropriate. They don't think too highly of themselves. They know exactly what they are, which is manufacturers of great and reliable watches that that aren't, you know, that aren't Omega. Yeah. You know, but they do. I mean, Omega on an objective level, Omega is kicking. Yeah. So, anyways, that, that's really what I wanted to bring up. There are, you know, pretty close comps in oh, these yeah. two brands, yeah. which we'll probably do with other brands too eventually. But there are close comps, and stylistically, you have a lot of choice. But when it comes to movements, for example, mm -hmm. when you talk about Omega and Tudor, destroyed. Oh yeah. You talk about history. It's also interesting. Omega went to the moon, but Tudor is tied to Rolex. It's all this, yes. all this other stuff. But yes. on an objective level, you can find comps. There's always some giant difference between the two brands no yes. matter what they are yes agreed i love both brands uh, i re really do but i gotta i gotta give omega just i'm i'm more in awe of omega than i am with tudor i like tudor a lot tudor's great tudor's got a tudor's great yeah but i'm i am when i think about omega watches oftentimes uh again at their factory especially i'm like wow that's unbelievable that's that's crazy you guys are nuts you yeah. guys you guys you guys try too hard almost you guys are putting that much work in and that blows me away agreed Fantastic. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Yes. Uh, thank you to Masterworks for sponsoring today's video. Um, I highly suggest that you go take a look at their website, create an account, and consider investing in some art, or at least just explore the whole uh, explore the whole thing. Yeah. So, that's great. Michael, thank you for putting this live together, baby. Anytime, baby. A lot of good stuff, baby. Thanks, man.